Hi there, I trust you're doing well. It's always good to be back and spend time with you. I'm Kwame Benny Smith, an HR expert, and I want to especially welcome you to the fourth episode of the Job Hands Recreation Series. This channel will be your human resources community for knowledge, expertise, and resources. If you are new or yet to subscribe to this channel, I'll be sharing a lot of resources, informative tips, and techniques relating to HR. As such, remember to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss anything I share on this channel. Don't forget to check the description section of this video for links to job postings as well as other resources I'll be sharing in today's session. In our last episode, we talked about the importance of emphasizing your skills during your next interview. In today's episode, we are going to talk about how to create an ideal curriculum vitae. Whenever you go for an interview, keep in mind that the potential employer has no idea who you are. They usually see your resume or CV first. So it's important that it makes a good impression. It is also important to remember they are usually going through several resumes or CVs at a time, and at most, yours will get about a 30 second glance to catch their attention. Therefore, you have to make it count by making sure that the CV is well written and grammatically correct. It is a difficult task to present your best asset in such a small amount of space. In today's session, we are going to spend some time to look at how we can create an ideal and engaging CV. So without wasting much time, let's move straight into it. Before we move into what goes into the structure of a CV, let's first look at, on a high level, what recruiters or employers look at for during their CV screening process. When a recruiter picks up your CV, they need to instantly be engaged. To make a strong first impression, your CV should present a clear, concise and powerful summary of your skills, experiences and achievements, and also be tailored to a specific employment opportunity. In terms of skills, highlights relevant skills acquired throughout your career history. Your skills should underpin your experience and demonstrate your suitability for the job. When it comes to achievements, don't just list your duties and responsibilities. Take the opportunity to highlight what you have achieved in the role. Use examples relevant to the job you are applying for that paints a picture of a competent and skilled professional. And when it comes to experiences, recruiters will often scan CVs to select candidates with the right kind of experience. Communicate the value you can bring through your employment history and make a relevant experience stand out. When it comes to screening of CVs, employers or recruiters see a lot of CVs and there are likely to be many qualified candidates for any given role. Making your CV stand out is key to securing the all-important interview and is really worth spending time on. So what are some of the ways we can format our CV to make it engaging enough to arouse the interest of a recruiter to read it? Firstly, let's keep it brief. Aim for a maximum of two sides of A4, unless you have a particularly long career history. Or for a fresh graduate, a single page is perfectly acceptable. Ensure to use good formatting. Use a common font like Era or Times New Roman and a font size of 11 or 12. Ensure that there is plenty of white spaces on your page, as it will be easier to skim through the document for key information. You can achieve this with standard margins, line spacing at 1.15 and gaps between paragraphs. Don't be tempted to try to cram too much information into a single document, since if it's hard to read, then employers may not bother. Remember to also use clear and engaging language, that is try to be concise, avoid jargon and use active words such as leading, achieving, delivering, etc. The next area of discussion is the structure of the CV. It is important that your CV contains enough of the right information for the employer to feel that you are a good fit for the role. There are a number of key sections which most CVs must contain, so let's spend some time to explore these sections. First is the personal details. You must display your key personal details clearly on your CV so the employer can contact you when the time comes for them to reach out to you. However, this is not information that the employer will be using to assess your suitability for the role, so don't use too much space for it. You should always start with the pertinent information such as your name, address, contact numbers and emails. Your name should be the title of your CV and should be in bold letters at the top. If your CV has more than one page, have your name on all of the pages just in case they get separated. Next is the personal statement or career profile as some will term it, which is the reason why you want to apply for the position. This is the opportunity to sell yourself in your own words, make it clear and concise. Avoid being too general and make sure that you tailor it to see the position you are applying for. 
clearly explain how you meet the requirements of the rule whilst demonstrating your enthusiasm for the opportunity. Avoid vague statements such as driven with great commercial skills as you are providing no evidence that this is the case. Instead, deliver factual information that illustrates your skills. For example, I was the top-ranked salesperson at Smith Tapes Company Limited, delivering sales worth over 50 million Ghana cities in 2019. Make sure that the examples you use are relevant to the rule and organization you are applying for. The personal statement should also contain one or two sentences that convey a slice of your personality, the reasons for your career choices, and why you are suitable for the position. The next section should include your relevant skills and the knowledge you have acquired during your previous occupations, and that is your experiences. Use this as a way to highlight your accomplishments. Try to include as many details as possible without using too many words. You should start with your most recent rule and work backwards. For each rule, include dates to and dates from. This is important because it enables a potential employer to see how long you stayed with your previous employer and also to spot any gaps in employment they might want to explore with you. You should also include the name of the company plus a brief explanation of what they do if possible. This plays two main roles. First, it can be used by the employer to check your references. And second, it can also help the employer understand more about the kind of organizations you have worked with. It should also include your role and a summary of your key responsibilities. This explains what you did. Keep it brief and assume that most people are broadly familiar with what most roles do. If you manage people, mention how many. If you had budgetary responsibilities, mention the size of the budget. You should also include key achievements and successes in the rule. This is your opportunity to sell what you did in the rule, especially if it was over and above what was expected. Try to identify three or four achievements for each rule and ensure their relevance to the job you are applying for. Where possible, try to quantify the benefits to the organization. For example, identify an opportunity for insulating pipe work leading to energy savings of over 10,000 Ghana cities per year. After that, your educational background information is next. Some companies prefer people who hold a degree in a certain field. Employers use this as an indicator of the type of training you have had and the accomplishments you have achieved. The last section should provide details of a personal nature, such as hobbies, interests and character references. Your CV should paint a picture of you as a person, and your hobbies and interests can provide an insight into your personality. Your hobbies can demonstrate additional skills and differentiate your CV from other job applicants. Being active in an organization, certain social skills and leadership abilities can show employers that you work well with others. That being said, hobbies are often subjective. Some recruiters love them and others feel they are unimportant. Generally, an employer would only be interested in your hobbies if they are relevant to the rule you've applied for. Remember, employers look at potential applicants who not only have the qualifications they need for the job, but also those who are well-rounded. Just keep these thoughts in mind as you are writing or updating your resumes and CVs, and it will help you present yourself in the most positive way possible. If you are stuck and need help working on your resume or CVs, there are many tips and resources available online. All you have to do is search for examples related to the type of job you are applying for, and you can find tons of ideas you can use for your own. If you want even more help, there are people and services available that will help you tweak or even write your CV for you. Just look for CV or resume writing services and you will find plenty of choices to choose from. You can also hire my services to assist you. To hire my service, click the link at the description section of this video and I will get in touch with you. Alright, this brings us to the end of episode 4 of the Job Hands Preparation Series. In the next episode, we will be looking at the various types of CVs and when to use them. As well, we'll be looking at how to create a list of warm contacts. Stay glued to the channel and ensure not to miss this episode. 
If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, then be sure to subscribe and click the bell button to be notified anytime I release a new episode. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you give us a like, go ahead and drop a comment below and I'll see you in the next video. Oh,